Um, so I was going to go with a bank. They charged me 10000 up front for the loan. And it took six months for this refinance. And I still did not close. <laughs> but finally, I just got fed up and I said, why am I doing this with a bank? I bought these properties with private money. Why don't I just go out to the market and see if I can raise the money? Well, within uh, 45 days, I raised the private money, all of it, and closed the refinance. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host for the show. And we've got an amazing show lined up for you today. I've got a couple of guys here on with me today that are simply going to blow your mind. First of all, they have raised several million dollars for long term rentals. They've also raised millions of dollars in private money for apartment deals. Well, a little bit about their background they are currently holding several hundred rental units um, in a market and, and, and in place they've got a um, they've got a in-house management pro, um, company uh, they've got maintenance teams in addition to that uh, got a podcast called the passive road to retirement podcast in fact i was a guest on it pretty recently and that's an amazing podcast that you want to set out well these guys have scaled their investments to the acquisition of uh, large multifamily apartment complexes. Uh, they've got several hundred units uh, located actually in Florida and in addition to that in Georgia as well. Well, they have a company and an investment team that has experience in investing tens of millions of dollars of capital across real estate cycles, asset classes, all kinds of risk profiles. Their investment team has over 40 years of combined real estate investing experience and knowledge. And in this episode, I'm going to get them to pull back the curtain, share with you exactly how they have raised a lot of private money for their real estate deals and how you can too. Don't go anywhere because in just a moment, you're going to meet my friends and my guest, Andrew Jarrett and Nick Cooper. Well, hello there, Andrew. Welcome to the show. Hey, Jay. Great to see you again. Great to see you again. We're sort of reversing roles here on this uh, show today, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on here as a guest and your partner, Nick Cooper. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having us, Jay. Appreciate being on here. Absolutely. But first of all, we're going to pull the curtain back and we're going to talk about how you guys have raised uh, millions of dollars in private money. So, you know, I'm just going to throw the questions out there and you all uh, can decide who's going to answer the question, right? So, uh, so the first question is whoever wants to tackle it. In fact, both of you can. Um, who wants to tackle the question of um, how did you get started in raising private money? Like for a real estate investor, here's the question. A real estate investor that's never raised private money before, what's the best way to get started in raising private money? Well, for me, I started out in small multifamily and single family. So what I did was I went to my local RIA, Real Estate Investment Club, networked with people there, and usually they have private money lenders there you can meet. They also have hard money lenders, which are higher rates, but they have a lot of private money lenders. So I met some people there. Uh, once I started closing deals with those lenders, I actually went and talked to some attorneys in town. And of course, they're closing the deals, so they knew has the money, right? So I talked to him and uh, and started asking around, and they actually referred me to people that uh, did you know did tons of loans. And then I had 
you know, quite a bit of uh, money at my disposal to buy some more deals. Nick? So for me, it started out, everyone eventually runs out of your own money, right? So I did my first few deals with my own money, single family. And the next I scaled up to multifamily after 15 years of doing single. And then I realized like, I don't have any more money left to get more deals. So what I had to do was go into find, you know, your power base, you know, your friend group, friends of friends, family, or even groups you belong to. Like for me, I'm, I'm retired military. So you kind of find a place where you already have some rapport with people. So if like my wife is also raises money with us or capital and she's in medical sales. So it helps having those connections too in different industries. Like, so her medical, and for me, it's, it's, you know, military government service. So your power base is really where you want to at least start in the beginning. Most of the difference, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, no, Nick, I'm not going to ask you that question yet. <laughs> I want to go back to something Andrew said, Andrew, you sort of, uh, I don't want, I don't want our listeners to miss on something you said. You said that, or maybe it was Nick. I don't know. The two of you are already running together with me. Who said that your real estate attorney can refer you to private lenders? Yep. That was me. Mm -hmm. That was you. Andrew. So that's a nugget right there. You know, if you are doing business with a real estate attorney that is closing private money loans, yeah. that's a writer downer right there networking through your real estate attorney as to who else is loaning money, right? Exactly. exactly. What, what better reference can you get than an attorney <laughs> that's closing the deals? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Nick, a, a second ago, uh, you said uh, you made, you made a reference to private money lenders and hard money lenders. I want to I want you to drill down on that for a moment because a lot of times real estate investors, particularly newer real estate investors, will confuse hard money with private money. How about let our listeners know really who's a private lender, who is a, or what is a hard money lender? What's the difference? I think that was Andrew that had that, that uh, statement there. Oh yeah. So yeah, the difference is basically the rate. Uh, so a hard money lender typically, I mean, it varies, but for instance, a hard money could be 12% with two points up front where a private money is an individual just looking for a passive income stream and maybe you're paying them 6%. Uh, they're not doing it as a business. They're just looking for, you know, passive income. Whereas the hard money uh, is a business or, you know, or, a, or a corporation lending out the money. So quite a difference there between, you know, private and hard money rates. Yeah, Andrew, it's been my experience that most of the time a hard money lender, as you said, has got much higher rates, much, you know, it's got points. Um, so most of the time a hard money lender is going to be a broker. There's going to be a broker of private money. And I've got a lot of friends that are hard money lenders. I'm, I'm not knocking hard money at all. I say, you know, put together and establish as many relationships with funding sources as you can. Um, but of course, in this world of private money, we make the rules, uh, we set the rate, we set the term, whereas traditional institutional money, the lender sets the terms and, and, and makes the rules. We got Andrew McAllister from uh, LinkedIn saying hello to all of us. And um, Ernesto Gerardo says, hey, gentlemen, uh, what rates are you seeing in the private money world right now? Well, I can tell you what I'm seeing in private money, what I'm paying. It's interesting since I made the rules, I'm paying, <laughs> I'm paying the same thing I did started out in 2009. Andrew, Nick, what are you all paying? Now, let's answer um, Ernesto's uh, question there or uh, Ernesto, Ernesto. I can't even, you know, I'm not Hispanic. I'm trying to get this right. What kind of rates are you all paying out to your private uh, money lenders? And do you ever pay points to your private lenders? I have never paid points to my private lenders, um, <laughs> but I typically pay, I could lower my rates, but I don't. I just keep it at 8% interest only. Um, I know you can probably borrow for five or six private money wise, but uh, for me, I've always just offered eight since I started and, and that's what I keep it at. You know, Andrew, I'm exactly the same. I put my private lending program together back in 2009 when I was cut off from the banks. I haven't changed it. 
even though mortgage rates have gone up considerably uh, in recent times, you know, even now today, the average certificate of deposit yield is paying 0.97% in the local bank. And, you know, you come along and pay 8%, you know, that's yeah, more than yeah. eight times they can get in the local bank. And yeah. my private lenders, your private lenders, we, they are just as happy as they can be because they're getting a high rate of return safely and securely. You know, we're not borrowing money unsecured. We always give them a deed of trust. We give them, you know, the mortgage to back that note. And, yeah. you know, Andrew and Nick, I want all my listeners to really get uh, an understanding of what this world of private money is all about. And I just finished writing, I'm so excited about it, a brand new private money guide. Andrew, I know you know about it. Yep. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Investing Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. You can download this new private money guide for free and it will get you on the fast track to private money. You can download my private money guide for free at www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash money guide. I am an E R, not an O R. I am J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash money guide. Download the money guide for free and get on the fast track to private money. Andrew or Nick, how do you start your conversation with a potential private lender that never heard of private money and don't even know what it is? For me, what I ask is I never directly ask the person. So I'll say, do you know anyone who is looking to make a return secured by a first mortgage on a property at 8% interest rates? And, you know, for people that are worried about getting turned down, you never get turned down or you never hear a no because they're not asking directly. And a lot of the times for me, what happens is they'll say, well, I would be interested in that. And they become a lender or they have two or three people that they think off the top of their head that they refer you to. You know, Andrew, what you just described is exactly how I raise and started raising private money. My very first private lender was from church. It was on a Wednesday night after church Bible study. Carol, Joy, and I were there. And I, there was this gentleman that I've known for years. I asked him if he could visit for a few minutes. And uh, we went into the room uh, down the hall, shut the door. And, and I said, uh, you know, you know everybody in this town. And I've now opened up my real estate investing business to people I know and trust. And I'm now paying crazy high rates of return safely and securely to people that want to invest with us totally passively. And when you run across somebody that's complaining about the volatility of the stock market or not getting hardly any money in the local bank, would you refer them to me and I'll teach them my private lending program? Same thing as you, Andrew, yep. you know what he said? Well, what you got in mind? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think you made a great, a great point there, Jay, is you tell them your story. You don't tell them just, Hey, it's great return. Like what's your story? What are you doing? People resonate with that and are attracted to your story and how you're doing things. The numbers, you know, what's the whole saying? It's like facts, tell stories, sell. So tell them that. Yep. Absolutely. Go ahead, Andrew. No, I agree with Nick. Um, that's a great point. You know, instead of just, throwing out numbers, if you can actually tell them a story and kind of reasons why and, and really resonate with somebody and, and get that relationship. That's what private money is. It's relationship money. That's a good point. You're right. That's another name for it is relationship money. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick and Andrew, I know that we have got thousands of listeners here tuning in to this show and there's a good chance we have listeners that are tuning in that would really like to get a high rate of return safely and securely. They know all they can get is less than 1% of the local bank. You guys have got a, a fantastic track record on working with private lenders to give them fantastic returns. It's safe. It's secure. Uh, how about uh, talk about your all's business, your business model, the real estate that you're investing in and why someone might want to reach out to you to learn more about what you do and perhaps become a private lender. Sure. Nick, do you want to talk about the multi? Yeah. So Andrew and I, 
do multifamily, so it's going to be you know larger apartment complexes. You know, twenty units to about hundred units is our target. You know, uh, audience or looking for a class C like workforce housing, which is going to be you know blue collar workers. And what we do is we're called syndicators, so that's where we do raise private money for these deals. And like I said earlier today, you can't do this all on your own. Multifamily is a team sport. So how do we get everyone to buy this? Like when I was growing up, you always saw those apartment complexes like, oh, who owns those? Well, now it can be you. So we can all buy this together and we all get the LLC. We run the deal. We get private money investors to come in there and invest with us. Andrew? Yep, that's the apartment business. And then we also have, uh, I still have quite a few single families and smaller multis. And I actually just did a deal. Um, so I was going to go with a bank. They charged me 10000 up front for the loan. And it took six months for this refinance. And I still did not close. <laughs> so finally, I just got fed up. And I said, why am I doing this with a bank? I bought these properties with private money. Why don't I just go out to the market and see if I can raise the money? Well, within uh, 45 days, I raised the private money, all of it, and closed the refinance. And uh, yeah, the bank just, you know, just basically told them not gonna, not gonna do the deal. Um, but it was so much easier just to raise the private money um, and get it done. And I had a couple of things that happened actually so one lady, uh, when we first, I bought a duplex from her. And when I first bought it, uh, I haven't talked to her in years. It was her and her husband. So I called her and said, you know, my, my mortgage is, I think another five years out, but I'm doing a refinance that I can pay you off early. Well, her husband passed away and she said that she counts on the income every month and she didn't want the money back. So what we did was just restructured her into interest only payments. And uh, now she's got another five years of, of money coming in at 8%, which, you know, actually made me feel pretty good that I, that I can help her uh, meet her monthly income goals. And also another token is some of the loans I had, I would call them and say, you know, we have 10 years left on this loan. I owe you a hundred thousand. Say, would you take uh, 75 if I could pay you off in two weeks and, you know, eight, nine times out of 10, people will take a discount. So you are actually saving money uh, when you pay them off as well. Awesome, Andrew. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so why, for the benefit of our listeners, why would a individual be interested in being a private lender? What are the benefits to being a private lender? Nick or Andrew? I, I think you make the rules. That's, that's the situation here. It's like before, like I think Jay, you mentioned is, the banks have all the power and all the rules like well now you can be your own bank you make the rules you decide what the rate is hey eight percent oh maybe that's nine but it all depends you come to an agreement with that person and i think that you could get power back in your court and the person who's borrowing from you so both you guys have the control yeah it's got to be a win-win scenario right everybody's got the win andrew if i wanted to be a private lender and invest in your syndication, uh, Andrew, why would I want to consider being a private lender with your fund? Basically our track record and we, you know, Nick and I both put our investors above the deal. Uh, I know Nick as well as I would do whatever we had to do to make sure that we protected our investors money. That is our, our main thing. Um, and you know, a lot of people, not, not a lot of people, but some people, you know, look out for themselves, but, you know, our main, our main focus is protect our investors. Absolutely. We just had another question come in from our LinkedIn audience. Um, and the question is, you may see it in the comments. They say that um, they have a few properties uh, to cross uh, collateralize for a private money loan. Um, the it's worth about 3 million. They're looking for 360,000. The question is, um, for either one of you or both of you, do private money lenders have interest only monthly payments with a balloon payment? Well, the best thing about private money is you can structure it however you want. So the, the refinance I just did, I did 8% interest only with a five-year balloon. And everybody was happy with that. You could structure it 8% interest only with a 10-year balloon or 20-year balloon 
or whatever you want, whatever, you know. Yeah, just ask, just yeah. put it out there. Yeah, um, Nick and Andrew, same thing for me. I, um, I really leave it up to the private lender or private lenders when I'm doing a project. Uh, how often do they need payments? I mean, it's the same money. I pay 8% per year and I'm only paying that 8% on while I'm using the money. But whether they get monthly payments, quarterly payments, semi-annual payments, the only difference is how often do we write a check? There's no more income for them to make. Of course, interest is not, interest is not like paying rent. Interest is always paid in arrears. So we pay interest after we have already used the money. A lot of deals, you know, we're able to structure to where we don't even make any interest payments at all. We just let the interest accrue until we cash out on the deal. Uh, a follow-up question to the question we just had come in is what is a balloon payment? So a balloon payment is when the entire note uh, becomes due and payable, whatever your interest and principal is for that time you had the money. So five-year balloon to be in five years from the day is when you owe all that close mm -hmm. the loan out. Yep. Exactly. So the balloon is the principal amount owed at the time of the balloon payment. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got it. You got it. Well, we got LinkedIn feedback here. Thank you. You guys are great. So <laughs> the, LinkedIn, the LinkedIn audience is loving you guys. Um, well, this is phenomenal, uh, Nick and Andrew. I know that um, some of our listeners are wanting to reach out to you. What is the best way? Uh, your website, I believe, is jarrettcapital.com, right? Yep. Correct. Yep. And awesome. Go ahead. Yeah, you can send me an email. It's just andrew at jarrettcapital.com. So for those of you listening, you want to network and continue the conversation with uh, Nick and Andrew, you can go to www.jarrettcapital.com. That's spelled J-A-R-R-E-T-T capital.com. That's www.jarrett, J-A-R-R-E-T-T capital dot com and of course we'll have that in the show notes well final word and then andrew I'm, I'm sorry what was that i said you got the final word nick and then andrew after you no, i'd say reach out to us if you're looking to grow scale or even just start so we're here like we do this full time this is not our part-time job i retired from military almost two years ago and he's and has been doing this for almost his whole life so it's all we do reach out to us Andrew? Yeah, I would say learn the power of private money. Your your money guide that you told everybody to get is amazing. I've looked at it. I would definitely recommend people get it. And, um, you know, it's, it's the way to go. I, I prefer not to go with, on smaller multifamily, not to go with banks anymore and just raise private money. It's the best way to go and I recommend it. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Nick, for taking the thank time you, to join me here on the show and there you have it my friend another episode of raising private money i'm jay connor the private money authority if you found this episode valuable then i really would appreciate a um, a shout out there subscribe like if you're watching on youtube be sure and click that bell if you're uh, listening in here on itunes be sure and click follow so you don't miss out on any of our amazing upcoming episodes Look forward to seeing you right here on the next show. This is the Taking Your Business to the Next Level. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. We'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide.